Witch people. Aha. Uh -huh. Witches. Witches. Mm -hmm. I guess you found me out, huh? Yeah. Yes, you did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You should come around here on Halloween. You'd really see something then. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we all jump off the roof and fly. We kill our husbands, too. Or is that outside your jurisdiction? Hey guys, welcome back to Spooky Tuesday, a weekly podcast where we're breaking down all of our favorite slashers, thrillers, monster movies, and black comedies on the new scariest day of the week. I'm Sydney Thompson. I'm Monica Height. And I'm Chelsea Duff. And this week, this week is a sad week. <gasps> it is unfortunately the end of Sydney Palooza, which Don't say that. I know it's devastating actually, but Sydney Palooza can live on in your for heart. All of us. Always. Devastating equally it's for everyone. It's a state of mind, actually. It is. So it I would like to say of that mind. you can enter Sydney Palooza anytime you'd like. What yeah. is what is it? It's like Hotel California. You can enter it, but you can never leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so true. I've always said that about Sydney Palooza. I have, I have as well. Yes. The Imagine how new. I feel. Uh but so not only is it a sad sad day it is also an incredibly fun happy day because it is halloween yay what? it is our peak our super bowl our what is another <laughs> very super important bowl day, day. <laughs> the olympics the olympics and it's just like the olympics. <laughs> it's the olympics of being spooky yeah it's the spooky olympics i am gonna gold medal don't know about you guys it is <laughs> Not a fifth Friday, but a fifth Tuesday. Fifth Tuesday, baby. Because our podcast Tuesday. comes out on Tuesdays and it, and it doesn't come out on Fridays. I so. know, but I always want to say fifth Friday because it just, <laughs> you know, it goes better. But whatever. It's fine. You. Everybody knows what I mean when I say that. Except Chelsea's always like, what Tuesday. do you mean fifth Friday? <laughs> fifth what do you mean? Tuesday. You mean? There you go. I fixed it. What movie is spooky adjacent? What movie is awake a, like what movie awakened so many queer women in 1998 oh, yeah. Yeah. what movie has so many good bangs another nod to Sydney yeah. Palooza everybody has different bangs at one point that's fun and that movie is maybe one of the greatest movies ever made actually it's like four movies in one movie and that is Practical Magic oh god it felt like okay. watching practical magic is like being <laughs> like hugged and caressed by the season of fall you know what i mean it's like halloween comes and it gives you a gentle kiss on the lips and it says i'm nicole kidman you know what i mean it says watch out for your husband hang on to your husbands girls <laughs> <laughs> who's doing it like her but yeah i, I mean one. a secret that i actually um very specifically did not tell you guys at the end of last episode when we were announcing this is I actually hadn't seen Practical Magic before <gasps> um, I and I didn't it. want any shit for <laughs> I fucking knew it because you were not as jazz and I was like why aren't you jazz and then you were texting me earlier with like some of your reaction and I was like why was she was so not jazz just that one text no. you sent and had this strong emotional reaction <laughs> if she wasn't jazz no now it all makes sense yeah everyone just always assumes i've seen it and that i really love it and so you that... give out i love practical magic vibes you just do okay and now that i've seen it i do love it because sandra Bullock <laughs> is my girl um but yeah, I, I, there had been like a little resistance at some point before, I think because everybody just always made assumptions and it's like, um, actually, you don't know me like that. Have um, you met Chelsea Duff? <laughs> she, if you to ask her to watch something, if you say, I think you'll really like this, she will say, no, I will not watch it because you suggested it. <laughs> I, don't I will then watch it do. on my own time and I and will I also love it, but it's fine. Yeah, well, because like, what if I watch it and then I don't like it and then I have to tell you that I don't like it? Like when I gave Suspiria three knives last week and everybody was like, oh. <laughs> I know you're going to come. Bring some gonna, vibes. You're going to come to it. It's going to come to you when you're ready. You just weren't ready. Here's I wasn't thing. ready. And I hadn't been ready for Practical Magic until <laughs> now, but it was forced upon me and it's it's a slut. Here's the thing. If you gave Practical Magic three knives, 
I will be there in two weeks and I will fist fight you. So I'm just up. saying, like, I know. Then I'll you beat live. you up right back because I wanted to do a Cinderella story. <laughs> that that movie thing, actually but... takes place on Halloween, by the way. <laughs> it well, takes you know place what? around fall, Halloween and vibes. so does this. It's not fall vibes. Yeah. I got this outvoted. <laughs> Halloween in it. And yeah. also now it's changed your life. So I think you should be thanking us. <laughs> And we'll figure out a way to incorporate Hillary Duff into the pod as soon as possible. Oh, I'm calling dibs on the next Halloween Fifth Tuesday. That's mine. We can also <laughs> just do the Sharon Tate uh, murder. <laughs> no. That is also great and worth a watch. And everyone is agrees it's universally beloved. Um, But did you know, Spooky, that, that Hillary episode. Duff starred in a movie <laughs> where she played Sharon Tate? And also the guy who plays Aaron Samuels is in it. Did you know? We've brought and, it up before, but in case you didn't know, it's a great thing to watch on Halloween. <laughs> and also that they use the same set from Scream 3. Yeah. And also it's like, what if Sharon Tate had visions of her impending death so she could maybe avoid it? So that's really a respectful handling of that whole true crime story. It's, it's so uh, fun. Hillary <laughs> Duff did great. It's an incredible film. Okay, but Hillary. if you like Chelsea had never seen Practical <laughs> Magic before, according to IMDb, uh, two witch sisters raised by their eccentric aunts in a small town faced closed-minded prejudice and a curse which threatens to prevent them ever finding lasting love. Which, like, I yeah, sure, that's how... one plot of the movie. I forgot about how prejudiced everyone in this town is towards witches. And I just think Listen, it's a bad idea to be mean to witches. I don't know. It doesn't seem yeah. like it's going to be in your best They're not interest. Considering the everybody, that's, everybody that's been mean to me has suffered the consequences, okay? Same. And that's because that's I have high-powered witches in my arsenal. Yeah. But nobody's <laughs> ever been mean to me in my life, so I just can't really. I'm just, everybody's so nice to me because... I'm so cute. Chelsea Perfect. Chelsea, Chelsea Perfect. perfect. <laughs> Why would anybody be mean? It doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Well, that's amazing. Oh, man. I'm really glad that we watched this movie because um, I have bangs now. And that's... that's <laughs> Monica's joined that's the bang. Why. Really affirming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really bang affirming film for me. Um, also, Sydney Palooza. Um, I, I had my first episode with bangs. At the start of Sydney Palooza, mm -hmm. just yeah. to let you know. So that was a little gift to you that I I, I was influenced by Bang. you and the fact that my um hairdresser just gave me from Went bangs, even though it didn't. Sometimes ask they for just them. give you bangs. Sometimes and it's like, it... why did you do that? This is the Sometimes second time in my life in... this has happened. <laughs> Sometimes you go in and you're like, I want to look like Nicole Kidman in Practical Magic, and then you come out looking like me. And then sometimes like... you just go in like Monica did, and they were like bangs like practical magic and monica was like that is not what i wanted but it is well, what i needed actually it is, it, it is. <laughs> i really like it i literally was saying while she was cutting it i was like you're not giving me front bangs right and she's like oh no of course not <laughs> <laughs> anyway she i'm going to go back to her because i look fucking great so you love she her, knew what she was doing yeah no yeah she gave me a great gift want. no she it need. was like she listened to the higher power she listened to the Nicole Kidman and all of us, the 90s Nicole mm -hmm. Kidman and all of us. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, something that is very Sydney coded um in this film is the fact that child Nicole Kidman is literally child Sydney Thompson. Um I don't know if you've ever Just seen with a red of hair. child Sydney, but she looks exactly like that and it's kind of really I mean like like you know a little bit you had an awkward face and that's why you're so funny this child obviously didn't so it's a little bit different and you weren't a redhead but other than that literally it's uncanny it was kind of scary I was very scared also you <laughs> just look like her now also and I think that like if you start to go gray you should go red oh that's just my saying. plan I, I but here's the thing I always say I'm like I will be blonde until the day that I'm rich enough to have my redhead face because that is oh so my god it's so expensive, expensive to maintain to <laughs> i've been there i've been there and i said can we ombre it in so that it grows out okay instead so i can do it once every three to five years um that's what you no. have to do yeah the answer you is no you do that and then weeks. it fades in two weeks and it's like okay i guess god damn that's it, it. 
I was going to yeah, buy that super. shit on Amazon that you put on brown hair that's just supposed to make it a little bit redhead. Anyway, don't think it'll work. We'll give it don't a try. Work. That'll we'll give it a work. try. We could see. I don't know. But anyway, but I am movie. a blonde, <laughs> which means I would have to fully commit, you know? Yeah. Mm. I've tried to fully commit in the past and I had a tricky regrowth. I'm so sorry. That's very why I have to time. be rich very enough. strong line coming all the Do way it. down. It's very hard to capture the magic that is practical practical magic because like not but only they... is it beautiful but the music is beautiful the outfits are beautiful it's the two most beautiful women in the entire world together as one being quirky and fun together everything's so fun oh my god the ants the ants are so hot and cool one of them reminds me of my mom there's so much to hold this... in your heart <laughs> this movie literally gives me everything that i want because like not only is there a child who looks like me? But we also get baby Camille, like Camilla Bell. Oh my we god! Get yeah. Baby Evan Rachel Wood. Uh huh. No. Um, she doesn't look anything. She looks so different as an adult than she did as a kid. I had to Google who she was because I did not think that was her. It's also the red hair too. Like I think yeah, that will they committed to that red hair for Kylie and for young um, Julian. And they really did like a good job of pulling through that same look for all three actresses. Yeah, whoever dyes their hair is who I'm going to go to once I'm rich enough to go through my (laughs) redhead phase. (laughs) Perfect. I'd be like, this is the color. This is it. This is what I'm looking for specifically. Yeah. (laughs) Um... But yeah, I mean, they're all great. I love Stalker Channing from Greece. Um, Iconic. I yes that's who that yeah. is oh my god yeah um Aunt I love Diane Diane Weist and Jet from the 10th Kingdom which I actually mentioned last episode she's in that Good. um Aiden Quinn is in elementary with my other wife Lucy Liu so it really is a an all-star Chelsea cast I think this movie was made just for you with you in mind I had to come to it at the right time in my life, but I was always on this path, you know. And the right time was us bullying her into it for this week. <laughs> I actually, I tried to watch it last night because I was like, okay, I'll put it on. Um, And then I couldn't give it my full attention because I was doing other things. And I was like, no, I think I need to give it my full attention when I'm ready. And so I waited. And then this morning I put it on and then I just like immersed myself and I closed the door. So it was like nice and dark in here. Mm. Um. And then I cried three times because it was way sadder than anybody ever warned me. I need to know which parts you cried at. I don't know. Throughout, probably. (laughs) It's one of those movies where, like, if I'm in a fragile enough state, I could cry Mm -hmm. the whole time just because it's so cuddly. Um, It's so cuddly. I I think I cried when they were in the witch's circle and they're, like, right on the other side of the brooms. Mm. Oh, I don't blame you. Oh my god, it's so sad. It's just there there's so much going on. It's it's a very sad like story from the very beginning because it starts off uh with the ants telling the girls about the story of their badass witch um ancestor who's Maria. so gorgeous. Maria, she's so fucking stunning. Gorgeous. She was so the stunning. Puritan this family little hussy. Yeah. Whatever. Since when is it a bit of a crime to be a slut in this family, Sydney? I say that all the time. That might be one of my <laughs> most quoted uh, movie lines, lines ever. Yeah, it's really good. Also, the, you know, and she was sleeping with a lot of uh, husbands whose wives were on the town hanging committee. That it's sounds exactly like something that I would do. Move. Yeah. <laughs> Sad, not great, unfortunately. It her. like really can go either way because either you've got a sneaky in with the women on the town hanging committee, you know what I mean? But like once no, you're that would be if you were sleeping up, with them. <laughs> but then they would be. I don't know. I don't think you. I think that's more dangerous. You know what I mean? Because then like they're gonna be gossiping about each other, and you already know that they're bitches who love to turn on someone. But if you can somehow yeah. subtly get their husband to like put in a good word for you without revealing that you're fucking the husband, I think it could be a good scam. But Maybe it's a, a dangerous scam man. for sure. Risky. It's. It's just, it's not fair because she's just a powerful woman who's so hot that she's ensnares the heart and soul of every man who she meets. And that's not a crime, but apparently for these women, it is whatever. Mm-hmm. 
and then she just, maybe used, they just don't get it she's in no, love no with fun. love okay they, they're, they're not supportive of that they're and about then, like marriage is for duty or whatever probably yeah and then she's fucking pregnant and they make her live on an island by herself which is very Cersei by the way um which I love a little Greek mythology nod. Oh, I was like, what um, are you talking about? Circe, I... C-I-R-C-E. I think I'm saying it right. There's a whole really great book by Madeline oh! Miller about it. But she is the woman. She is a witch and she gets banished to an island and she's not allowed to leave. And I'm pretty sure it's Odysseus comes to her island with all of her dudes and she turns all the dudes into pigs um which is baller anyway but there is a whole book of that was it's like his, not historical it's like mythological fiction how about that they take a greek you're talking about the song of achilles in. no i'm talking about cersei i'm talking about cersei yeah I, I by madeline miller that was the one i read best. first before song of achilles oh no, okay she has she has like two i was like, like isn't that one about guys no, no, no. That one's also really great and has made me believe that figs are the horniest fruit besides peaches. Um, and wasps inside. And pomegranates. And pomegranates. That's true. All um, horny. But if, if you know, you know. Um, but yeah, so very, I think that's definitely was a nod to Cersei, her being banished to an island by herself to live out her days. Um, but she's got magic. She's fine. She doesn't need anyone. She's got those gorgeous flowers in her hair. That and eventually they that. repopulated that fucking island. So they put more people on that island. That's what makes me mad. Okay. You're talking about everybody in this town is prejudiced against witches. They're going around throwing little rocks and being like, witch, witch, you're a bitch. Um, this was her island. This is Maria's island. It's named yeah, after her. It's literally called and Maria you're coming Island, in Massachusetts. Being mean to Maria ancestral family. Like it's her island. You guys are lucky that they let you live there. Your guests on her island. How, How dare, dare you? you? No respect these days. It's no respect. respect. <laughs> Charlie XCX Caroline Polachek remix. Welcome to my island, bitch. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to my island. Oh, I do love that. Oh, I was like, I don't know that one, but I'm. I'll dance with you. Oh, it's a bop. Oh, it's just, Chelsea, you would it's love a bop. it. It's a great song. I don't take recommendations, so. Clearly, you don't <laughs> miss out on so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just I don't know. I want to change my whole life, and I want my whole life to look like this movie. Mm -hmm. Now, I was like, why don't I dress like this all the time? I spent like thirty minutes going through my closet, and I was like, I could dress like this. I found like three different outfits where I could look like them all the time. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna wear this hat every day. I'm wearing a witch mm -hmm. hat. We're all wearing witches hats. You'll see that in the video clip. We're all wearing <laughs> witches hats. We're all wearing witches hats. There's nothing to question at all about, about any of our integrity. witches hats. They're all <laughs> witches hats, and they've always been witches hats. They've always been hats. They're all they're all beautiful <laughs> in their own way. <laughs> Some more uh, ingenious than others. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't. God, I just like, why aren't we doing like a spell right now? Why isn't the moon always really fucking giantly big and have that ring around it? I've seen a moon like that, though, by the way. Oh, a that blood moon? trouble's coming. Yeah. No, not the red one. I've seen that. I've seen it when there's the line or like the halo around the moon. <laughs> Didn't they yeah. also say that means trouble's coming or no? And then it's the blood moon afterwards. And that's even oh. spookier than Trouble is Coming. I don't know. But I only watched this movie once, so I didn't commit it entirely to memory. Same, so. <laughs> so a ring around the moon, like, the ring around the moon, I don't know what, I don't remember what they said, but it normally means, like, uh, a storm is coming or, like, something, like, so I guess that would mean, like, maybe Trouble is Coming. Mm. Okay. Slayed it. Well, I thought it was a nice thing, but whatever, it's fine. Um... Oh, sorry. We were talking about the curse. Then we were talking about the island itself and how they're all mean, nasty guests. But the curse is so sad that she, like, was trying to protect herself from, like, more heartbreak and then accidentally cursed all of her fucking progeny forever to have, like, oh, just yeah, the worst, worst fate. Because, ah, I don't know. I don't know what it is with my algorithm on TikTok lately, but all it's been showing me is widows. And so this hit extra close to home. I was like, this is horrible because 
Sandra Bullock was so happy. I he know. Was it's so, so sad. happy. And she he finally, was really cute. He was so cute. He was giving me Luke from um Gilmore Girls vibes a little bit. It's just the flannel and that. But like more happy. <laughs> but yeah, no, non curmudgeonly. Luke. Okay, I already know our poll question, and it is who is hotter? Uh Michael, her first husband, or uh Gary. His name is Gary, so that's not a fair comparison. <laughs> when it's he showed up, fair. I was like, his name's Gary. And then it's I was not... like, okay, well, Gary is not the true love because he they're very carefully showing me his eyes and they're both blue. And then Listen, later, they blew all they of their green. CGI budget on the soundtrack. <laughs> they said okay? we have to save the green <laughs> eye CGI budget only for when it's plot relevant. We can't we can't show our hand too soon. <laughs> Yeah, I was confused by that too, but it was also like remind me of Harry Potter when they're like, "This is this person," and she has the wrong color eyes. I can't remember who it was. It was like Harry Lily. and Lily. Yeah, they're both supposed they're to have like, green eyes. But oh, I love her green eyes. Blue she eyes. like does just doesn't in the movie, mm-hmm. and they say like her green eyes, and they're just lying to you. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> they're just gaslighting sure. you. I yeah, know. I well, feel like they should have like, had guess- a big enough budget to CGI his eyeballs. I was like, maybe his no. pupils are like really big or his iris. Yeah. No, his pupils are really big. And that's why I can't tell that one of them's green. <laughs> maybe it's a very subtle. It's like a blue green. I think it's like he's like Sydney where it's like his one eye changes color with his mood. But most of the time his mood is like just chill hanging out. So it's matching the other one. And it's only when he's like crazy in love that his like green eye gleams. It flashes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sydney, I didn't know you had a color change eye. It's exciting. Not she only mentions it eyes constantly. Oh yeah, my both God. of my eyes do it, Monica. She doesn't talk about it to me because she doesn't want me <laughs> to feel bad because I have shit brown eyes. <laughs> Monica's tuned it out the four times Sydney's mentioned it on this podcast. <laughs> I don't rem- You know I have a terrible memory. Why are we surprised? <laughs> that, honestly, Every it's day. why I love Monica. I constantly talk about it. Every you day. get to it's tell like, her oh God, your stories so cool, over actually. and over. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell me everything a thousand times. I'll be like, oh my God, that's so awesome. If it's just like important things I remember. I mean, it is important that your eyes change color. I'm sorry. I don't want to trivialize your eyes changing color. <laughs> uh, but you're right. This is like five different movies in one because it's like their beautiful childhood after the crushing loss of mommy and daddy. Which well, is no, it's like the an old historical witch movie at the fair. beginning, right? Yes, and then yes, it's yes, a yes. dead parent movie. Uh, and then it is a um, broken heart. Which I like I was reading Reddit and people were like shitting on that. And I was like, that's like a legit medical broken heart syndrome thing. is like, real. Broken heart syndrome is like actually real and it happens it's a mostly thing. it happens in like older couples yeah. who've been together for like a really long time. But I guess like that just shows how in love these two people were yeah and she was a witch too so you know maybe she had like bound their souls and by accident it happens all the time in witchcraft (laughs) it's called you won't believe on your period (laughs) well that's one way to do it (laughs) creates a bond that's magical it's really magical It is. It is. That's what, that's where the magic comes from. <laughs> Your pussy baby. That's where the magic is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the heart of it, of course. <laughs> Your pussy. That's assume. where the heart is. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh yeah. Okay. The <laughs> second movie was Dead Parent movie. Pussy Dead Parent where movie. The heart is. Got it. And then you have the third um, movie. <laughs> you have the like the sister movie, right? Like. All oh, that yeah. kind of stuff, like this is like, kind of on separate I mean, journeys. Yeah, two of them are kind of separate. brief. It like it's in there. Yeah, like and then you have her thing. romance. Yeah, and then you have her romance movie slash husband death, and then you have um like abusive kidnapped movie Murder thriller. Yeah. yeah. And then you have a detective movie. Oh, you're right. Detective comes before paranormal haunting. 
Yeah, and then like <laughs> paranormal hunting, and then you have, and then an, you have exorcism an exorcism movie. Fucking exorcism! I totally forgot. I was like, I, was like, I forgot <laughs> there's a fucking exorcist part of this, and like that's why she has front bangs so she could look exactly like Regan. Just saying. So you could see how like sweaty and exerted she is by like exactly. her sweaty bangs on her forehead. Listen, but he doesn't mean that we're gonna get a demon in us because we have front bangs. Is that what we've opened ourselves up to? Yeah, That's everybody what knows. You both opened yourself up to. I'm safe. Yeah, everybody That's why knows I said that Sydney front and I, bangs Chelsea, <laughs> means I'm open to demonic possession at all times. Front bangs means trouble is coming, just like yeah. a ring around the moon. Exactly. I, I knew you were trouble when you walked in, is what the demon sings every did time. Did she have she bangs sings. when she did that? That's going to yeah. be... Oh my God. Of course oh, she did. Fuck. She had bangs in the red era. Oh my God, classic. Okay, well, there you go. It's See? foolproof. Had... That's what the demon sings as it enters your body because it knows you are a willing vessel because you have front bangs. I have to say <laughs> that ever since I've gotten front bangs this time around, I've been engaging in much riskier potential openings to demon behavior i wow. walked through a spooky Welcome forest to demon time monica i walked through spooky, spooky forest in europe which is haunted europe is haunted eastern europe is all haunted oh it's so and haunted i went into a tunnel that where a river was and i walked deep into it um that was a bad idea i went into a little hut like where the blair witch would be um every time there was a cave i went into the cave so I think at this point it's an inevitability, and I didn't she know really why I was doing it. this, and it was because now I know it's because of the banks. So it's actually it brought me a lot of clarity. Thank you. <laughs> now you know, um, and you can protect yourself in the future. But it was a rough go. No, I think I'm still going to be doing some dumb shit. Um, it's unfortunately, the banks. It's yeah, the it's banks. The banks. It's the bangs. You can blame everything on your bangs. Your mental health, your risky behavior, your yeah. demonic possession. Bangs, 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 bangs. bangs. <laughs> okay, one thing I have to say is that I don't appreciate how cyclists were imp <laughs> implicit <laughs> or part of Michael's death. I don't like that at all. They're just some nice cyclists. For a second, I really thought he was going to just be run over by the cyclists <laughs> and that was going to be how he died. And I was going to hold you responsible a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> Monica, know. answer for their Monica's crimes. fall. Yeah, Monica, answer for the crimes of cyclists everywhere. That would be on him because that happens all the fucking time in the Tour de France. <laughs> Everyone crashes and they smash into each other and only sometimes they die. So I'd be very unlucky <laughs> if he died. Um, but yeah, I was like, wait a minute, what is this? Like all of these cyclists, I don't remember this. I know he gets hit by a truck, but I forgot there was the ruse of him being hit by many, many small tires. Um, but no one said he was having a wonderful last moment of his life, actually, where he was like, wow, yeah. the rush of the cyclists, the wind in my hair. Pow, kapowy. Um, that truck driver is really bad at his job, but I guess it was written in the stars. But um, also, like, think about the truck driver. Like, not only, like, this is a small island town. This truck driver was, like, really close behind all of those cyclers. And also, yeah. like, so why was he going that fast behind all of those bikes? Like, fast enough to murder this man. I know. He didn't care about that. He was experiencing, I bet you, a road rage experience because people get really mad when they're around a lot of bikes. I know this because they're so mean to us on the road. Um, And so he was going zoom, zoom. It's like that guy who drove through the parade. Mm. Road rage, classic mm. road rage experience. He got was... mad that his route to work was slowed down and he was trying to make up for lost time. And then he got Michael. And then he murdered someone. Terrible. Horrible. <gasps> banish him to an island Seriously. that's the worst crime mm -hmm. i agree i agree Ugh. i just feel so bad for sandy bullock they had such a cute little business plan too where they're gonna do a little yeah and, and it was like other stuff it was very sweet to watch that their love story movie in the movie because um she just wants to be normal and like she never wants to fall in love she just wants to be like okay and by herself and like be normal and like live life and integrate into society around her and finally she's like meets her. she's alone also because her sister left her sister left what to be in love with a thousand men and she's like I'm just here and I'm hearing about adventures but I'm not having adventures and nobody will talk to me other than my aunts 
And finally, he, there's like a new guy in town selling apples or whatever it is he does. And she's like, oh my God, he looked at me when everybody else casts their glance away. Like, that really, I was rooting for them. That moment when she's just like, you know what? Gardening is over. She's I'm waiting. running through the town in my hunter boots. <laughs> waiting for the tick of the clock to be like, the market starts soon. So cute. I love, I love all the fucking 90s rom-com aspects of this movie. Like, the 90s did those movies better than anyone else. They really Sandy did. Sandy Bullock's okay. the queen of that. Seriously. This is like peak Sandy Bullock and like Nicole Kidman for me. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, I don't know. Because Miss, Con- Miss Congeniality is my original Sandra Bullock. And so that's probably the peak for me. Because I just don't know that that I can top it for myself. Mm. But the two of them together in this is such a joint slay. Seriously. Oh my God. I okay, but want to know something really funny? Exists. Yeah. So we have the classic iconic moment of uh, Sandy Bullock running down the street to Faith's Hill song, This Kiss, right? It's so 90s. It's so perfect. It's so visceral in your brain, right? And then <laughs> the soundtrack years to later, movie. who does Sandy Bullock play? like wife to her who is sandy bullock's on-screen husband <laughs> in the blind side <laughs> tim mcgraw who is faith hill's husband and now we've got wow. our taylor swift connection wow. again too exactly it all goes back to taylor swift because tim and you McGraw. Know who also likes taylor swift nicole kidman she was at the concert yeah oh my god and then you want to know what her and Keith Urban did. They Whose expose- spot they blew up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all connected. Incredible. It's Love always it. sunny meme where it's like all the mm-hmm. lines. The Pepe Sylvia meme. Yes, yeah, 100%. Were- mm-hmm, I could see that. <laughs> I was really beautiful to watch you guys put that together. <laughs> just from the outside looking in. Thank it was just you. really <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. but yeah I just I loved that scene also where Nicole Kidman I'm just gonna say that because I've forgotten everyone's names so that's what I'm doing Nicole Jillian. Kidman Jillian fine um she like Jilly like, Bean. I, I need to go see my girl I need to go see my sister and she like gets in her car and like sings a case of you and like the fucking set in the background is like the t- time of day changes as she has her mm-hmm. little road trip. That was like my favorite scene of the movie. Such a good like, scene. I fucking love that song so much. That's like one of my all time favorites. The James Blake cover is really incredible, but that one, that version is so spectacular too. I'm just like, I just, I love their bond of sisterhood. It's so mm-hmm. beautiful. And they're witches, too, so it's extra magical. I don't know what that's like, but it seems very, very cool to be To be magical sisters. Magical (laughs) sisters. I'm an only child, okay? So Mm -hmm. I'm just like, wow, what's it like? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a sister, so I can't speak to that experience, but I always always wanted one, so. We can be witch sisters. How about that? Okay. Great. It's done. Sydney didn't want in on that, I guess. (laughs) I also don't have a sister, so. Well, well you we didn't speak up fast sisters. enough to be. No, it's just you and me. It's Sydney's last day of Sydney Palooza. We can't oust her she from the sisterhood of Spooky Tuesday. Here's the thing. I'm not a sister. I'm actually witch queen. So oh, so we're not good enough wow, for her okay. now. Actually, never mind. Yeah. You're not a fucking <laughs> actually, sister. Actually, we're witch sisters. And I don't I... know who you are. I I'd be like, since decided Chelsea, that. I'd be like, since Chelsea actually <laughs> excluded me, I'm be like, actually, I'm better than you. Bye. <laughs> okay, I came into this with an open heart, and it's just me <laughs> inviting you in the first place and now you shunned me my wrath will will come upon your household okay, <laughs> blame it on chelsea, chelsea actually yeah. you're gonna see so many fucking toads bitch you're not gonna know what the <laughs> fuck to do but you know what you're gonna get Chain what box. <laughs> oh god Cursed no gems. i'm an adult i don't want to get shingles it's really bad when ah. you're an adult <laughs> okay but this is something and this blows my mind so, did y'all have chicken pox? No, I never did. No. So, y'all probably got the chicken pox vaccine, right? Yeah. Which came out 
I don't know. Like, so I had chicken pox, like me and my brother and my dad all had chicken pox together. Um, okay. I'm one of the last like age groups. Everybody that I know that's like younger than me never had chicken pox. And I'm like, and I just thought everybody had chicken pox. I had no idea there was a chicken pox vaccine. Yeah. Well, it used to be that everybody was like chicken pox is really bad to get as an adult so we want everyone to get it as a child and once one kid has chicken pox we're gonna bring all of their little friends around a chicken pox party so that they can yeah that's so what that we all did these kids can get the chicken pox out of the way because they thought that that was the smart medical thing to do and then I guess at some point later it was like oh once you have chicken pox you kind of always have chicken pox and then yeah, you can, you can get shingles mm-hmm like the un, like Monica, if you've never had chicken pox, you can't get shingles. You have to have chi- like chicken pox. To oh, get shingles. I thought like, it was that's because what is. I hadn't had it. I can get shingles. You get okay. shingles from having you're, chicken pox. So safe. like I can get shingles. Wow. So all those people get fucked. Sister witches don't get shingles. Yeah, actually, we're immune <laughs> but- to those types of diseases. <laughs> Most of the time, like you, like people that. Like, so you don't even get it, but it's like really weird. But so my dad had it, which is really funny. And my mom, like when me and my brother had it, my mom was like, what did you, you didn't, you never had chicken pox, like mm. as a child. And so my dad was like a 33 year old man. Going and through the, it, I bet. I still have chicken pox scars, like on like my tummy and stuff like that. Like, I, I was a scratcher. Like my oh, mom yeah. had yeah. to take a Should've oven seen me mix. Like 20 bug bites last week. My mom took oven mitts and duct taped them around our hands so we couldn't <laughs> scratch. Me, there's like Are a there photo of me, of my brother, yeah, me, my dad, and my brother all with like oven mitts. Oh duct my god, your dad got hand. duct taped too. That's <laughs> so fucking funny. The way the kid oh. in this movie, they just take him out and about. Like that must have just been <laughs> a, a feature of the '90s that was like still holding on at some point. Yeah. Oh. Also, okay, this is the vaccine. this is related because I just cursed Sydney with toads. Um, there was a witch's curse on this movie. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Um, apparently they like hired a witch to to be like a, like a consultant witch on the set of the movie. Um, and return and in return for her services, they like paid her a fee, put her up in a hotel, and so she was like supposed to be the onset witch, which I love. But they got a witch who had a little bit of a mischievous streak, um, and she wanted that money, honey. So she called them and was like, "I demand a percentage of the film's profits and additional and an additional two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in payment." And the producers were like, "Fuck." fucking no like no because you're not getting that and so she got fucking furious with them and she claimed that she was gonna put a a land of curses upon them and started speaking in (laughs) tongues and so the producers were like what the fuck and then she also tried to sue warner brothers as well and so basically i think they paid her off to make her go away but damn she cursed the whole set um but I don't That's think that it worked because they had a good. I, I think everything was fine. Well, <laughs> there were some. They some had hiccups. some bad ratings. Um, okay, fair. And the cast and crew said during the exorcist part of the movie at the end, they all felt like or heard like supernatural noises or something oh, like fuck. that. So something okay, well, then was maybe yeah. going on. No, they got cursed then for sure. They for sure got Speaking cursed. of scams, though, Stalker Channing apparently also had a good scam on this movie. Um, okay. Because she apparently, this is from IMDb Trivia, she apparently lied about being fluent in French because she wanted a free trip to Paris so that she could record the French dub version. She wow. didn't speak French before. And I love she was like, scam. no, I definitely do. Um, Just fly me out to France and I'll do it. Or I don't know how it works exactly, but I mean, love that for Iconic. her. Iconic. I love a scam so good for her I love a female forward movie where ladies are just running scams behind the scenes I have a question okay um this time I watched this movie I this is like pretty obvious um but I didn't notice it before so Jimmy Angel Love um or Angel Love however you want to say his name Angel Love Angel Love um Jillian's 
boy toy. Um, is he like va- a vampire? Like, is he supposed to be? That's what a, a lot of people like speculate because they talk about him like staying up all night. Like, they talk about bats. Like, and I don't know if it's just how like he wants to be, but. Um, a lot of the internet speculate that like he might be some like weird like descendant, which is why he was able to open his eyes before they poked him with the needles. Yeah, I think that mm. he's a vampire. Yeah, because they he has all of this like weird like vampire coded language, and then he also like she calls know, him a Dracula how... cowboy or like says he has yeah. Dracula cowboy vibes specifically. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And he totally looks like a vampire. Um, I would say also that I can't blame her um for getting with him because he's so fucking hot. So oh I would God. also I fall for that so nasty, cringe. nasty shit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I've had crushes on people that look like that before. I fall for it. I fall for it. Like, the, like guy liner, did... big silver rings thing. I hate when to say he it. Did the like blindfold stuff. Like, oh, you I know thought me. that was hot. I love a good blindfold, but I was like, this is so cringe. Ugh, I know. I hate I hate it. And also I hate her it, little but I fell for the gimmick. by the pool. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, her dance. Her little life where she's when she's out going about before she's like really with Jimmy seemed fun. Love good for her. Having a nice time out by the pool in all of her 90s finest. With her one million friends and her quote perfect life. Yeah. Seemed fun. Seemed great. But yeah, I definitely think that he's a vampire. Because I think that's also another reason why he wouldn't, um, like, her loving him, like, didn't get him killed by the beetle thing first, you know? Like, they had to kill him. Well, but I also think, um, like, part of the question, well, okay, here's the thing with the curse is that they say that any man who loves one of them is cursed. It's not as much about their love it seems like but then they say it like it is her love because like sandra bullock really loved her husband um but so it's it's not totally clear a to convoluted me. yeah yeah like which one it is does it need to be mutual like what's the deal exactly um but mm-hmm. i i definitely think with jimmy for sure you can just be like well they weren't really in love they were just like in lust with each other and they were just like infatuated with each other obsessed with each other for a while but like was it love per se like does what where's toxic. the line you That's know what I mean sure. yeah oh, it was very toxic I don't know I still think he's a vampire it's okay you don't have to I, agree with yeah me. I'm I fully on like, board for I vampire. like it I like that he's a vampire add a little more spooky stuff to this also I've been saying spooky all the time instead of spooky which is going to be a really problem with our <laughs> branding moving forward Spooky Tuesday. Tuesday. Spooky Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> like only to myself. I'm like walking around in the house and like, ooh, spooky. Like I see something <laughs> that's spooky. I don't know. I'm losing my mind over here. It's going fine. Um, but yeah. What else? What else about this movie? Oh, okay. Just another, just a little shout out. I really like Carla, the crimped hair blonde girl mm. who works in the, oh, shop. At the shop. At the botanical shop. Mm-hmm. at verbena <laughs> i like I both know. of those those employees they're both amazing like Marco this Martindale. Seems like mm-hmm. a small little shop and there's three employees and they're all standing in the same position every time we see them in the shop so true, and what about that's, it that's, that's how that's much are shampoo paid. that one person said it's the most expensive shampoo he's ever paid for so clearly they are that they're just scary. charging well enough for their Okay, and his statement stands. You know, you can trust him because he's a love interest. Um, So that is expensive shampoo, but people are paying for it. And they're not putting it on their scalps, but it's fixing their scalp problems. So that guy, I assume, had something going on with his dick. Um, But she's making bank, I think. So she can afford to hire her sister just to mostly stand around. Okay, can we talk about uh, young... Sally uh doing a little spelly spell her tiny little for love spell her perfect man so she oh, never has to fall in love because a man like that doesn't exist and um I have the quote because I love this little quote it's so cute and she's like he will hear my call from a mile away 
He will whistle my favorite song. He can ride a pony backwards. Um, he can flip pancakes in the air. He will be marv- marvelously kind. And his favorite shape will be a star. And he'll have one green eye and one blue. It's very sweet. So cute. I forgot what she said at the beginning. And so I, I love that you said that. Because he flips that pancake. And it's shaped like a fucking cactus. Mm-hmm. Amazing. He's, yeah. What a and, man. Yeah. And he was I like mean, whistling the same song that Sally was. Like she was yeah. in the background like whistling. And he was like also Aww. whistling that same song. I don't. The he will hear my call a mile away. I wonder if that was like he was reading her letters. Like he got her letter. He got her letter. He felt pulled to come visit her. Yeah. Um. Right, I think like, there's a lot that you can like tie into it for sure totally oh, i like him yeah maybe he's not as hot as michael but he's got a hot personality and he's a cop he's so. cute oh. he's cute okay but well presumably he nice. gets a bad job cop. when he leaves arizona and makes a move you know long term so and also he helped her get away with murder so i know a bad that cop should be doing good that kind of in cop. general um All but it is corrupt get away for murder. what is just as opposed to what is um personally enriching so okay. that's good but chelsea does this not give you goodbye earl vibes a yes. little yeah i mean it does a hundred percent earl vibes <laughs> See? They are out there. Like, that verbena, that's her strawberry jam and Tennessee ham. Exactly. <laughs> yes. What year uh, did Goodbye oh. Earl come out? It must have been inspired by this. 2004? It definitely was way, it was after this movie for sure. But I bet 1999. you. 1999. Whoa. Immediately afterwards. Up. Immediately afterwards. They were inspired by this. You can't tell me different. I'm going to call up the chicks and I'm going to find out. Hello, chicks. <laughs> Hello, Natalie chicks. girl. Um, confirm or deny. Uh, but okay. Speaking of of music as well, I Is love the that they also had... want to sing with Taylor Swift. No, I, I don't want to talk about Taylor Swift anymore. <laughs> but it all yes. comes I back to Taylor Monica. Swift. <laughs> Stevie Nicks is more important than Especially, Taylor Swift. But uh, Stevie Nicks is Stevie more Nicks important. Also loves Taylor Swift. Likes each other. Okay, <laughs> shut the fuck up, Monica. At Don't the time that this has released, like that. 1989 Taylor's version has been out. Okay, like, did y'all the people see? probably want us to talk no. about her the whole time? Did y'all <laughs> see Stevie Nicks? Stevie Nicks? Stevie Nicks? Did you did, know but the did day? Did you see the Travis put, Kelsey I'm Taylor Swift letting kiss you talk picture? <laughs> Did you see no, it? Did you see I it? don't care. <laughs> well, I'll send it to you so you can care. <laughs> I do kind of want to see it because I it's just want to so see what good. that looks like. Who doesn't but like anyway, celebrity gossip? Yeah. It's Fifth Tuesday, not Taylor <laughs> Swift fucking Tuesday. It's Taylor Swift Tuesday, okay? No. <laughs> anyway, um, but I, I don't know. I just love this little trivia that I saw that was like they asked Stevie Nicks to be a part of the soundtrack for this and one it just makes sense why, why would you do it absolutely because she's an icon because she's an icon and who wouldn't want to have stevie nicks on your fucking movie but also because there were just a million billion rumors always and forever that she has been a witch her entire life and she is she has a magic way with words and music and she is a witch and we've all seen coven american horror story coven um mm-hmm. so we know confirmed canon she's a witch um, but I just I forgot she was on the soundtrack. Every song on the soundtrack blew my fucking mind. I was gonna cry just from that, but I didn't end up crying. Sorry that Chelsea stole all my tears because we're sister witches. I used them like, up. Yeah, them I used up her. the full quota. Yeah. There's none left. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's the only reason why <laughs> I'm not heartless. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay, let's talk about the murder. Um, the mayor dare. The mayor dare. Um, I just the whole the whole um lead up to that was was so good because it's just terrifying. He's such a terrifying guy. That brand thing with the ring, yeah, is so oh my God. fucked up. That is so fucked up. He's like telling this like inane story, and you're not really paying attention because there's so much other shit. And like, who listens to a man? Um, <laughs> sorry, to listeners. <laughs> um, but 
Yeah. And, and and then he's like trying to fucking brand her with that ring, which like, you know, a brand is not a hot thing, you know. I don't even want to wish that on a cow. Face, allegedly. I mean he oh, it didn't I seem thought he was going for in the scene. Arm. Yeah, it didn't seem like he was gonna do her face in the scene, but then when um what's his face was telling later about his previous crimes and they found that other woman in the desert, her face was branded. What a fucking obvious mo! He's so stupid. What a little bitch! Idiot. What a little, little bitch ass little bitch! Little stupid bitch ass bitch! You're gonna try to maim Nicole Kidman's face? What's wrong Her with you? He deserves what he got. <laughs> In high school, a bunch of kids, because I transferred school senior year, so at my like my old school that I transferred from, mm. uh, they all got drunk at a party and branded themselves with a fork and cool. that sounds they called great. it like the bear paw society or something like that and so it like looks like a bear paw. that's so fucking lame that's so wow. lame that said i am interested in the blood brothers thing that everybody's doing in this movie and by everyone i mean just the sisters sit uh chelsea Y'all can do that. As, you're on girl. As, <laughs> as witch sisters, are we going to do a blood As pack? witch sisters. Yeah, I think that's the obvious conclusion yeah. here. I don't think I got ringworm from all the cats I pet- petted in Europe um, on, oh, on the street. Oh, okay, great. So I think I that safe. it should be fine for us to do a blood pack right now. Great. Be okay. <laughs> I d- haven't seen any ringworm signs yet, and it's been a couple weeks. So that's oh, perfect. Really okay, so we're good. We're in the clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Anyway, I'll come over after this. We'll cut our palms and we'll have a cute little scar. We'll save it for your Halloween party, baby. Okay, perfect. Great. <laughs> um, But yeah, anyway, the murder part was uh, just very fun because I love that. I didn't realize he was drinking tequila. Um, mm-hmm. And I re- it was mezcal, I think, because she's like, I've got your worm later on. And the worm, they put the worm in the bottom of mezcal bottles. I think it was tequila, but I there I thought that tequila and mezcal were essentially the same for a really long time because pop culture doesn't really make a difference. And so I think it's just one of those classic things. The the mm. bottle says tequila on it. I thought the mezcal worm was only in No, you're it's right about much... the worm. Oh you, you okay. are you are right, but pop culture did not um, make them. that clear for yeah, they don't just put a worm in the anything worm. They don't can just you put believe that they would be misleading about that very serious fact um that actually probably is i don't know but it's important anyway yeah i mean fun and i want to eat the worm at the end but yeah i was talking about this movie a little bit with manu earlier and i was just like nobody told me how sad it was nobody told me how much domestic abuse was in this movie like i th- i think i knew that they murdered a man but i didn't realize they went that far and they murdered him twice they murdered and him then, twice. and then exercised him so technically I, they murdered that bitch three times and he deserved it so then all he three killed times him at that one point so that's like a fourth time if you really want to keep just adding on and it's he deserves so funny it every time every time he gets fucked he deserves every it. time he's such a little bitch it's it's so fucking funny because like Nicole Kidman's like, yeah, we have to bring him back to life. So we didn't commit murder. They bring him back to life and then they immediately kill him. Like commit literally, him. it's one minute. And they kill him. It was a good idea. They didn't really um research it well enough to it was know not a good if idea. it was gonna work out. But I, I appreciate idea. their line of thought, at least, is like you can't murder somebody if they're up and walking around, right? And if we make him into a demon, maybe it's not going to be our problem <laughs> after that. I don't know how they thought they were going to like release him out into the world without him coming back to them. But maybe they really bought into the whole, like, like okay, with Michael, the ants were like, it won't be Michael. It'll be something different. So maybe they were like, Jimmy was obsessed with Jilly Bean, but not Jimmy Monster will not be obsessed with Jilly Bean. So like, he will be evil maybe, but we can just send him into the world to be evil somewhere else. We need to make Pet Cemetery required fucking reading for everyone. Right. Or, or at least watch the goddamn movie. They come back wrong. But when they come back, they come back to your house. So they will come back to your house and they're going to fuck your shit up. We got to do pet commentary yeah. on the pod too. Just saying. I uh. want to know why that they just didn't like 
throw him in the ocean that's literally right there. He's just gonna yeah. wash back up on shore, girl. You you stab their lungs so they don't re like populate with gas and then you weigh them down and it is the Atlantic and so the water stays colder. Therefore, the body will not rise. You know, Pull you stab the water, their the body. <laughs> If you listen to every episode of our podcast and you write down all the things that Sydney says, she has told you how to kill someone and dispose of the body and get away with murder in like 15 different ways. Many, many great ideas. She's got a brain that's constantly going over there. This is beautiful. And I wonder why I'm single. A beautiful mind. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so scared of you. Anyway, um, but that's why why you live in Alabama. Yeah. I'm scared that I, but I, my toads will fuck you up. So you only. Yeah, to the toads are crazy in this film. I the love the crazy. toads. <laughs> Everyone was so toads. upset about it. And I was like, this is the only good thing that's happened with this man. <laughs> he brought all these fun toads. I would have such a great time. Be like, oh, a, a task for me to do to catch all the toads in the house. Amazing. <laughs> Monica Wait, and Antonia the would have been having a great time catching the toads an amazing time and i wouldn't have gone yuck like the little girls did (laughs) so immature (laughs) okay a weird fact so this was a book right Uh Um, oh i want to read it i think it's like a book series there might be like more than one book but i know like this is a book released in 1995 but uh in this movie kylie is the older one and Antonia is the younger one, but in the books it is opposite. And I don't know why they flipped that. I, I don't know why either. Wood. Or maybe because Sally maybe, was honestly. older. Or maybe because like Sally was older and brunette and Julia was younger and they younger. wanted it to be yeah. the opposite. Which is like I don't think they really made it clear that Sally was the older sister because I thought Julie was the older sister until I saw an IMDb trivia or not trivia, just the cast and crew that it was like Julie age 10, Sally age 11. I was shocked. Oh, it was shocked to find out that Sally was older. Are you kidding me? The It makes sense with her whole vibe and the tropes of the older sister being the one that's got to hold it it down and blah, 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 blah. But, but I didn't really think sense about to it. Me that they were like worried about like Jilly with her magic um coming in and being like a little bit of a late bloomer on that front. Um and with her going over I don't know. I I guess like one year difference, you know, it's very pretty close anyway, but I for sure thought that Nicole Kidman was the older sister. Yeah. I don't know. I just love them. They're so cute. Yeah, I mean, I, their moment together when um Michael has died and Sandy is her in her depression bed, which is so relatable. Um, and Nicole Kidman comes home just to like crawl in bed with her and like wake her up with one of those little nose strokes. I and would then be like, "Your breath is stinky. I love you." That was like so I love sweet. doing that with people. That was so sweet. This okay. movie is so formative to my personality. I love it. You just it's like so we're taking good. notes back in the day. Uh huh. Age it seven, feels... sitting there. Like my love for margaritas, my love oh for my braids. God. There you go. Yeah. My bangs. Midnight margarita. Midnight margarita. Midnight margarita. Like I wanted to make a margarita for this episode, but I also don't feel like drinking today. It was very unfortunate. I feel like I've done a disservice to the sisters, to the witch sisters. Also, the last time we tried to drink margaritas while we were watching a movie, it didn't go well. It recall. did not go well. We had to re-record I, that episode. Well, we had to bail is... halfway in and then re-record. And we were like, oh, this is that bad. May- <laughs> Maybe that's the last time you had a margarita while we were recording. But that is not that's the last time we it was the last had time margaritas all had while margaritas. recording. Only one person can have a margarita at a time. That was really bad. What episode that was... was that? <laughs> or Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Yeah, it was on Cinco de Mayo. That's why I was bad. But I, I almost think that it was Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, it was something. One day we'll release the footage. No, we won't. No, we won't. No, we won't. No, we won't. <laughs> no, we won't. No, we, won't. <laughs> we like had a whole margarita before we started, and then and we then had we another kept one. And then we, <laughs> and then we were like, we're this like is so silly. silly. Mar- margaritas in like forty-five minutes into the episode. <laughs> like, 
rough, 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 rough. <laughs> um, but yeah, I it was just, a great time for us. Would have been a bad time for y'all. Oh yeah, it would have been inane, inane. But <laughs> I just love this movie because it is so silly. It has all these different aspects going on for it. Like, why is the midnight margarita thing a thing? That's so ridiculous. It's man- magical. I guess it was to <laughs> let them know that the demon is bringing everyone tequila. Um, Which, I guess that's a very nice demon. What? I would accept that. Okay, I have a question about that part. Um, yeah. Are we to assume that it is somehow always magically the same bottle of tequila with Belladonna in it? And that's the what I was makes wondering. You sing the song. I guess sing the song. No, don't they no, no, sing no, the no. same song that he was singing right before? They do. He- Oh, I didn't realize that. And that was like okay. the the like muscle memory or whatever that like snapped them into being like, wait, where did this bottle come from? Right. Because they yeah. started thinking you were they always on the my trauma. mind. And oh, then they were yes. like, where did this bottle come from? And in the tune of that, they were like, someone left it on the porch. Oh, okay. That part I got. Sorry. I thought you were saying that the, <laughs> that, what's his name? Jimmy? Uh-huh. Yeah. That he- that he sang the coconut, the lime and the coconut song. Uh, earlier in the movie, and I was like, remember I don't the remember. Part where he sang the lime and the coconut. I, was, like, I don't remember that part. That's so weird. How did I miss that? No, I think this the midnight margaritas part though. I think is just um, it's just the ants absolutely living their best lives. Francis and Jet, like we see when Jelly Bean and Sally move in with them when they were younger, that they were like brownies for breakfast. You never have to brush your teeth. Um, chocolate all the time, whatever. We just have fun. This is a fun household. They're just keeping that going. They're like, you're adults now, but that doesn't mean that we can't come up with fun adult things to do. And presumably they're using magic to make sure that Blender doesn't wake up the children in the household. Um, But they're just, I I loved them making it like a little potion. It was so fun. I Yeah, I think it's also them being like, look how fun being a witch can be. Mm -hmm. Like you get to do whatever the fuck you want, whenever you want with no repercussions. Let us bring it back to last week really quickly. These are real witches here. You know what they're doing? They're using their powers to stay eternally youthful. That's what a real witch does. No, the you want to know what a real witch does? Looks they the use exact it so they same. don't have to stir their coffee or find a lighter because lighters God, always what go a missing. Task. Yeah. <laughs> it does like, every the all the little things that make your life annoying. The magic does it for you. You don't here's have to do thing. your skincare routine. Blow at the end of like my little joint and light it on fire. Do you know how convenient that would be for me? She That'd be so very sexy also. <laughs> <laughs> right. And her right. like extending the line of her neck to oh, blow so sexy. the candle. Yeah. And then her like turning and doing like a little smirky smirk. For like. kids. Or like when she's in the store and uh cop man, what's his name? Aiden? Gary. Aiden oh, is Gary. the actor's name. Aiden's yeah, actor's name. Gary. Gary is uh, <laughs> not know. a good I choice. Like, I don't want to call him Gary. Gary, oh, sorry. come on. Gary Bear. When he That's is so like looking. <laughs> he's like in the shop and he sees like he looks over and her coffee stick is mm-hmm. like swirling by itself yeah, yeah, yeah. and she notices it and he gives like a that was kind of sexy like but <laughs> Yeah, sexy. Okay, witchcraft is real. That's hot. Okay, witchcraft is sexy. Do? Oh my god. Because it is. I don't understand why they're hating on witchcraft, Sally. They're jealous. Because they're jealous. Sally, they're jealous. Sally is hating on her own witchcraft. Although she's sad. <laughs> but one a great scene is the PTA scene, right? Yes, that's so good. Those bitches are mean. Those bitches are mean. And one of them is talking about how they're like, oh, yeah. And Jillian, like, slept with one of the coaches. And her binder ring, like, snaps her finger. Mm -hmm. And Sally's like, Jillian, don't do that. That wasn't very nice. And she was like, that wasn't me. And Sally was like, that (laughs) that wasn't me. And then when, uh, you know, Jilly put Sally's name at the top of the phone tree list, she's like, now that was me. I was like, mm-hmm. sister, sister, let's go, girl bond. Yeah, I loved I loved that scene when she was being like, don't do that. She's like, you did it. No, that was you. Like, you. that was a really fun sister <laughs> scene to me. <laughs> that was one of my favorites so for sure. So cute. And made her the head of the phone tree. 
good for her. But she never gets picked. She never gets picked for anything. But I, uh, I don't know. I don't want to jump too too far ahead. But I feel like we're there. We can talk about like the the exorcism and the more of the finale stuff. I guess we haven't talked about. We've kind of just Gary bopped all around. Enough. But yeah, I mean, like Gary comes. They're all scared. All the shit keeps happening. A rose, beautiful rose bush. Talk about CGI. They use the CGI budget on the rose bush growing, and they didn't use it on his green eye. That's what they did. Right? The <laughs> creeping <laughs> rose it. vines. And it was very spooky and cool. coming down. No, that was probably a practical effect. That was a sleigh. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Gary is a- an interesting cop. I hate saying Gary, too, now that I'm saying it all the time. Right. The more you think about <laughs> it, the more hard. you're like, I keep thinking of the snail from SpongeBob. Oh. Oh, well, that's better for me, actually. Actually, but not sexy, though. <laughs> not, no, sexy, not sexy, but it's better. Se- well, maybe for some people. But, but beloved. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um but i don't know i love i love that you can kind of tell that they're both having you know romance begin between them where they like just like feel this pull towards each other definitely throughout and mm-hmm. they're just trying to push it away because there's so much other shit going on like how um poor sandy b she's not good under pressure when being accused of murder i can tell you you that but right do now you, okay I wonder if it is that she's not good under pressure or if it really was like the true love between them where she felt like she could not lie to him because part of her knew that was her true love and to be dishonest with him to start their relationship off on the wrong foot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, I think it was part of the magic. I like that read too. I think she also would be the type of person who's not good at lying to authority yeah. also because she's been the <laughs> right. big girl her whole life. Like the the older sister thing, and Jilly's the bad girl who's good at flirting with the police. Um, she's so funny when she takes her takes Gary's hand, and she's like, "I can tell that you've never taken your hand to a woman in your life." But <laughs> like being in that green fucking dress, that green dress. Oh, the green had, velvet like, dress of my dreams. Dress. Oh my god, so spectacular. Um, the dress we're wearing now is the black version of that, pretty much, but long. Just saying very similar mm. sydney great job um yeah. but yeah i i think that this rom-com aspect of the movie is is really really cute and and i do like the second act love fourth act i don't know there's like 40 acts in this we already discussed them um but i think my favorite part of this movie is when like all the fucking mean bitches still all come yeah, to her yeah. aid when she does the fucking phone tree like the phone tree is like this ultimate <laughs> pact <laughs> and this you little can't island. fuck around with the phone tree the phone tree is not to be fucked with yeah the phone and tree I- is sacred actually but there, there's also like in this moment the greatest moment in the entire film and maybe that's not true but it's up there when like <laughs> sally calls carol uh crimp hair carol who we love mm-hmm. and she calls uh the other lady who works in the shop and she's like i have great news sally finally came out came out yeah <laughs> love it honestly that, that was... was so funny and then right on top of it was like the meanie little lead bitch lady and she was like well you know i've always wanted to see inside your I house and honestly curious. same <laughs> yeah honestly, i mean same. that was so I real love the best part about like like if I ever have children, one of the best parts about taking them trick or treating will be doing a little peepsies inside all of my neighbors. Little houses. house tour, yeah. <laughs> like I'm oh. nosy. I want to see what the inside of your house looks like. What's I'm the layout? I'm looking Where in every window that I walk by. Yeah. If yeah. you don't have curtains up, I'm looking in your home. I'm I'm peeping. Mm-hmm. I'm looking. I just I don't want to know. I, I like I want to know. I'm not being weird. I. I want to know. I'm not I'm a peeping being... Tom. I don't want to see you. I want to see your house. I'm smudging my nose against the glass. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. Sandra Bullock's kids getting all up on the on the window at Verbena. Um, I'm just I... doing like a casual little glance as I walk by. I don't have my binoculars. It's actually fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. No. I mean, I think that is that is so real. And I also just loved that they were like, oh, like her sister had a bad boyfriend that they're trying to get rid of like yeah i'm down with that yeah they're like okay they're that's down something to good universally that we can like for like 
look past our differences and say, let's fucking kill this man together, you know? Isn't that mm-hmm. so beautiful? It's just really moving. I, that's when I teared up. <laughs> Honestly, though, <laughs> when they're all like, I'm there. And I was like, oh, they're putting their differences aside. It's so yeah. moving. <laughs> No, it is really sweet. And I'm sure the, like there was some leftover affection for Sandra Bullock from her normal era. You know what I mean? When she was just like married with Michael and they were living in the town, presumably they like moved in with the rest of society and their kids were going to school. Mm. I think they had like a brief period of being like really integrated into the community before he died. And then everyone went, oh, the curse is real. Now we've seen it for ourselves. Now we know for sure they're witches and we don't fuck with that. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That makes it all the more devastating that she was like, became a social pariah again after Mm -hmm. not having that be the case anymore that makes it all the more painful it's bringing up her childhood trauma and then also she's being completely left behind when she She has to move back in too with her aunts instead of like she she couldn't live in that house anymore maybe part of it and like part of it is like maybe she can't live in the community anymore um there's just so many elements to that there she's so sad she's like it's not that she wasn't embracing her magic with Michael, although who really knows like the status of her magic at that time exactly. Yeah. Um, but to be like the curse is real and have everyone turn away from you, I think it makes total sense why she like c- turns her back on her magic for a long time and is just like, I'm not even gonna bother anymore. Mm-hmm. No, totally. Except for the oh. coffee because she couldn't give up that. Yeah. Listen, that's that's second nature. practical magic, baby. Like <laughs> it's practical. Yes. I told you that in the title. Oh my god, no, I'm not it. doing that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> magic magic that's for fun over here. <laughs> oh my god, amazing. We're only using it for. If import- I was a witch, and they practical literally were just like, only. <laughs> they were like, you can stir your coffee, you can light things on fire. I'd be like, can I? clean my house instantaneously like that would be enough can i disappear all of my spam mail right like that would be mm-hmm. enough magic for me i'd be like mm-hmm. i'm okay with this like that is fine yes, what if the toilet really bowl help. was always sparkling clean 100 of the time with no effort from me that what would be like I a number one i think had to fold and put away my laundry or do a dish or i love vacuuming so i'd want to still vacuum but what if i never had to mop and you might need what to bring is- your little dirt devil to a witch circle one day. So that was so funny. That, that was cute. Yeah. <laughs> what if it would hang all the pictures I need to hang on the wall for me? That would exactly. Be, zoop, zoop, that would zoop. really be it. Like mm-hmm. you can make your own toast inst- instantaneously. Like that's the kind of magic that I am looking for in my life. Seriously. Oh, but then the the, the final like showdown. It's so beautiful. Like, I just love them crossing all the brooms together. I love mm-hmm. that image. I, I love that they didn't end up using the dirt devil because it would have ruined <laughs> the image. <laughs> They're like, that's sweet of you, honey, but we have the real thing. <laughs> they just, like, stretch the cord out. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, expecting to see that, and I was like, thank God they didn't do that. It would have looked like <laughs> shit. <laughs> um but and I love like just all their trepidation being like, are we supposed to say this too? And then they're trying <laughs> to say it and they're all fucking saying it wrong. Like I just thought it was so sweet. They're doing their best to be witchy sisters. And uh, yeah. like one little bit before that too, like um one of them was like, One time my son was hurt and I could feel it all the way across town and one of the aunts is like there's a little witch in all of us and I was like there is a little witch in all of us <laughs> well that's because like back in Very... the day we, like witches were just wise women yeah and also they all live on Maria's island so right? <laughs> the witch island let's not forget whose island we're all on ladies did I say this last week I don't think I did I saw this tiktok recently though <laughs> that like the reason that rooms are associated with witches is because i'm so sorry um back in the day like they like this isn't written down really but like there's this rumor that it was like 
a woman was like pleasuring herself with a broom and yeah. like the, the man she was walked riding a broom was riding a broom and, oh, and so you don't mean, you, a man okay. walked I had a different mental it. image for a moment no, no, but I've corrected no, no. yeah 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 um and was like she was she's in hysterics yeah. she's a witch she's in hysterics she's possessed she's by Satan she's a possessed by Satan and so that's why they fought witches road brooms um but it was just women she masturbating <laughs> right in that room and there was like some continued discourse was like yeah they would put like hallucinogenic bombs on the wood of the... <laughs> anyway a beautiful rich history of, i want to put uh, hallucinogenic bombs on a broom and then hump yeah. it until you get high uh-huh i would absolutely do that that sounds like a fun i just time. think it's a beautiful rich history of witchcraft <laughs> i love women i love, I love women's women. lore <laughs> the lore of women runs so the lore funny. of women is so beautiful it's so beautiful um <laughs> but yeah i i you know horror actress nicole kidman i mean we just had vanna tell us last week to watch the others which i still haven't seen since last week so whoops um but like look at her being exercised Spooky, mm-hmm. scary, so spooky. Yeah, and she had just come off of Eyes Wide Shut also. I think that was oh, like yeah. the movie that's she had it. filmed right before this one. Um, or at least that's what IMDb trivia led me to believe because there was something on there about how the director was like getting frustrated with how many takes it would take sometimes for them to say their lines because Nicole Kidman just came off of that movie doing like 70 or 80 takes for each scene or whatever. So uh, you gotta try it out a, a thousand freak. different ways. Yeah. Totally. Oh, but yeah, she's a little like scream queen. She did great. And I loved all the ghost stuff with um Demon Jimmy. Like, this is the before part when they were up in the attic question mark. Um, when Sandra Bullock's future officer husband came in and he had his 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 sigil, his talisman. Um, which helped him to combat the spirit. Um, but I loved when we saw him like come out and he was uh, facing off and and being spooky. I thought that was a really fun visual because we got a little bit less of that in the exorcism scene, which was great because it was more Nicole Kidman and Nicole yeah. Kidman focused. And it gave her the opportunity to just be like writhing and sweating, etc. Um, mm-hmm. But it was a good, it was fun earlier when they did that. And this one, he mostly like fine. went up in a big cloud and then became dust. Yeah, and I just, I just love that intimate moment when like Sandy B throws herself on the ground and is yeah. like, "You have to stay with me." And she's like, "He wants me. Just let him take me." Like she's so, Jillian's so tired. Ah, oh, it's so sad. And their little fucking blood pack saves them again. Oh, <laughs> sisterhood women oh, it's a sis- <laughs> like it's like a strong feminist sisterhood movie as well mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. yes i feel in touch with my femininity i'm wearing 90s clothing and i have bangs i love i love being a woman what's that sound <laughs> god i love being a woman god i mm-hmm. love being a woman <laughs> That and then that's over, and then it's again about a man, unfortunately. <laughs> well, but I think they do it in a nice way where it's like they broke up earlier because she was like, We can't be together. You'll always wonder if it was the curse. I'll always, you'll, or I'll always wonder if you're here because of the curse or the spell. And you'll always wonder if I'm with you because I don't want to go to prison for murder. Um, and it's just not the right time for us to be together. Even though my daughters are on board, which is nice to see, at least. Um, Because can can you imagine if then they had to deal with the drama of the daughters being like, you're not my dad. Although I'm sure that's coming eventually. Um, But yeah, I mean, they (laughs) (laughs) look, it's just an adjustment period. They'll get over it. They love him, I'm sure. Um, But that whole scene I thought was sweet. And I like loved their make out in his hotel room, um, which also felt very like, magic influenced to me like he's making bad decisions because of the pull of the spell you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um because if you're a cop and you're investigating somebody for murder you probably shouldn't make out with them um but it was a great kiss i loved the kiss i loved the like pull away come back together i like that he left so that he could put 
the whole murder investigation to bed. I don't really understand what he did there. Did he fake a whole crime scene and said he found the ring at some faked crime scene so that he could no, get her it was like a house burned down. And so I think he just threw the ring in there and was like, he's And just, dead. they were like, we assume oh, he perished sad. in the fire. He probably was in there. <laughs> Yeah, okay, they probably had to, there probably had to be, like, someone who died in there, so they know there's ash. I don't know. Can they distinguish a, a human ash from other ash? I don't fucking know. I don't Deep. know about that. Unless, like, it, like, Deep. fully burns, like, the whole bone, which is why you need to know, uh, pull but... out all their teeth first. Okay, another hot tip from Sydney. Add it to the list. Add it to the list. <laughs> cut off all Stab their them fingers. In the lungs. Take yeah. out their teeth. Cut off their fingers. And okay. Cut off their fingers. I guess I could Google like the heat at which bodies are cremated and the melting point of whatever metal that ring might be made out of, but I'm just gonna assume fair you don't enough. Need to do that. He's a cop. He says the ring survived. Her- I agree. I think the ring survived. Great job planting evidence um i hope he immediately quit his job after that when he moved back to maria's island it's beautiful love affair yeah he goes and just works in the shop with her yeah he carries on michael's legacy and every day he goes sorry michael but thank you for your sacrifice i love my beautiful family well i I like how even her girl's like him they're you know on board I mean? they're like, like they're 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 he can they're flip a tree. pancake he knows how to make them look like saguaro cactuses cacti but they're like my mom literally wished this is her for true him. love you know what i mean yeah. like yeah and they want mommy to be doing more magic because then they can do magic that shit for them yeah they dance naked under the full moon they love that they shit love- they Every- loved it yeah everybody loves dancing naked under the full moon uh-huh. it's part of being a woman <laughs> it is um and then they jump off the roof at halloween and they float down with little parasols i love that the thing that turned the tides of the entire town to accept witches and be like it's cool now actually we're not scared was murder of a man <laughs> <laughs> they're like you know what he if you it. use it to kill a guy then it's actually pretty cool and i am on board <laughs> they didn't use it to kill a man they used it to banish an evil man and that one lady wanted to do it to her ex-husband too exactly they're, they're like they you know we what? See the perks not now. so bad and they can fly and they're they look hot all the time and they're gonna make me an ointment where maybe i can look hot all the time there's no reason to be against witches having witches on your side is the way to go. It's the only way to survive. Sydney could have been Sydney. part of our witch coven. Ugh. I have anyway. my own coven. Thank you very much. Wow. Anyway, it's I'm older on. and more established than yours. We said we were sister witches first. Actually, I've been an active <laughs> practicing witch for years. Yeah, yes. but we said it first this episode. So she has been an active practicing witch. I've been there. I've been part of your coven thing, but I'm like, um, like an assistant. <laughs> We're like the ladies who come I'm, to help banish the ex-husband. I'm the yeah. assistant. I yeah. was we want to hold the for broom. five years. We want to so... do the chance. <laughs> yeah, apprentices. There you go. I'm an apprentice. I'm an apprentice. Okay, it's time for our say it, Sydney. Oh, she's coughing. Segmentos. <laughs> Okay, the first question that we always ask is how could this movie be gayer? And I have to say it. I have to say it. If they had just been fucking lesbians, they wouldn't have had to worry about the curse at all. I was just thinking saying. about that. Yeah, just I did saying. think about, did any of them even consider being lesbians and if that would subvert the curse? Also, yeah. are boys never born into this family? And would the curse apply to them if a man fell in love with them? I mean, or if they were gay, just by I would virtue? assume. Yeah, but like if if they are a straight boy, also is that a loophole too? Or like the impression I get no. is that they just don't have boys. No, they can have boys, but they are gay no matter what. If they I have a boy, Sally it's a gay boy. And Gary oh. have a boy yeah. child. I well, just, the like, curse is gay. broken. The curse now, so is he's, broken. He's, they have a boy. He can be whoever he wants to be. Um, but also, okay, hot theory. Um, okay, we know that the ants 
are ants, but what if one of them is like an Owen's aunt and the other one is like an aunt, but it's just her wife. So you like, think they're together? The aunts aren't sisters, but they're in love. I, I don't, don't think, think they are, but I think they should be. That could be a rewrite where they're just, yeah. Like she, like, cause I feel like Francis would be the Owens witch and then I think Jet would be like a witch from somewhere else and they met at one of their conventions and she was like yes I will move back with you because Francis mm, was they like they danced you know, naked together under the moonlight together it was and Francis was like sight. Edward is dead so I'm gonna be a lesbian now I have met the love of my life and they live together as eccentric aunts yeah I could see that in a different version of this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's not definitely not the case here, but for a, sure. And I would this love is that my for Roger Channing. And also I would love it for Diane Weist. Um, like, but they yeah, would I make an incredible major, gay eccentric couple. The major mm-hmm. drawback of this film is that all of the women are related. So it's like they, it, you can't have them be lesbians together, really. I know. Um, you there can't is even tension. let me fantasize because it's, so, it's wrong. There is tension between Sally and that one PTA lady who just wanted to see inside her house. Mm. Tension. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Your house. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, Sally did officially on the record come out in this movie. Mm -hmm. So lots to be um projected there for sure but yeah I was curious how much I was so curious how much being gay could be a loophole um and like what the deal was but I'm you know it was a heteronormative society that made this film and they couldn't fully grasp the potential um but the potential's there regardless and all these bitches gay but also they just haven't maybe realized yet unfortunately if um this movie had had them be lesbians then there would be no plot because yeah there wouldn't have been the whole murder thing because this never would have had to happen and blah 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 i do think that we can decide that jet and francis are lesbians but just not together and they're happy to live their life as sisters in their family home blah 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 but whenever they're going to the full moon naked dancing conventions there that is like the hookup spot yeah it's like you know how bitches go to conferences for work and it's just like a fuck fest Mm -hmm, allegedly or whatever i think it's like that oh allegedly of course (laughs) allegedly of course yeah i've I've never been i don't know okay yeah yeah i allegedly know know of that Mm -hmm. yeah i think they're out there um being gay they like they're like their romantic feelings they've like closed off that part of themselves but they're out here like fucking with the other which is for sure i can see it they're just two hot sexy spinsters good for them Take that word back. <laughs> um, okay. Were we ready for where would Matthew Lillard fit into this film? <laughs> I think he could be Michael. He could be Michael. I think I would like him better as Gary. At that age, it would have been hard to believe him as Gary. But also, well, but he can time travel. To him as Michael, too. That's true. Yeah, I like thinking, neither like, of he's those. He's in his prime in '98. He's still mm-hmm. in his prime now. To be clear, to be clear. But sorry. also, like, if I'm gonna make a magical dream list, like list for a man, yeah, Matthew Lillard is gonna show up. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, no, ma- yeah. that matches all of City. So it okay, just, it sure. makes sense. <laughs> I see what you're saying now. He's Gary. Yes. Yeah, he's that's Gary what we all me. collectively dream up as a man. He's <laughs> Gary me. in mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. Practical Magic movie. In a new Practical Magic where his name is also not Gary. Um... <laughs> yeah, his name is not Gary in my. He should have Magic specified movie. that. And in, in that one, he called... shows up. He says, "Hi, I'm Detective Matthew Lillard." Um, yeah, and it's like Matthew Lillard. Did you change careers? And he's like, "Just <laughs> <"What's your> <laughs> But then at the end, he's like, "It wasn't for me." I'm going to stay here and go back to being an actor, but he's going to raise your family with you. Amazing. Okay, perfect. He's Gary. 
Um, that brings us to the dumb bitch. Almost knocked over everything in my life. Who's the dumb bitch? Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I was I was going to say and I didn't even want to say it really. So I'm glad that we have another option. Um, I was going to say Maria did sleep with some unfortunate people, as discussed in the beginning, but she didn't mean for the curse to turn out the way that it did. So I just I don't want to put any of that on. No, her. Um, uh, the townspeople. Oh, the townspeople. They're the townspeople being dumb bitches for sure. Are certainly dumb bitches. Like and they never learn. They're dumb bitches from the beginning and they just be staying dumb bitches no No, they they learn learn by the end they're like there for the halloween demonstration i love it when you jump off the roof yeah (laughs) okay they're fine in act four but they're dumb bitches the first three acts they're dumb bitches for a really long time but jimmy is ultimately the dumb bitch because punch nicole kidman in the face he's the dumb beautiful you had nicole kidman and you could lock nicole kidman down and instead you beat her up yeah like that is really bad decision making um it's really stupid it's really unbecoming behavior if you can't handle a bad bitch don't date a bad bitch exactly mm-hmm. and she would handle a bad bitch in this movie. die yeah <laughs> so okay, that one's on him he's the dumb bitch for sure okay that brings us to our knives out of fives then so i heard you say something about bad reviews what what What? i know what i was surprised to hear it too because while i had previously not seen this film it did seem like it was universally beloved um but then on imdb trivia it only has a 6.3 out of 10 which you know not terrible um and then on rotten tomatoes it has 73 percent fresh from audiences which again like okay but it has 24% rotten from critics, which is like so critics crazy wrong. that I was shocked to see it. But interestingly, the like top little excerpt from a review on Rotten Tomatoes' website said that there were too many like jarring tonal shifts, basically. Um, and, oh, you know, we did talk about movies. how there's like five to six different movies in this movie. So I, I do see what they mean. Um, I, yeah I think it is most people have decided that it's charming but that one person was upset about it and I guess so we're um, 76% of their colleagues I hate them they're wrong and they shouldn't ever speak again I'm sorry that's mean we're allowed to not like the same thing I guess <laughs> but he's so wrong anyway who wants to go first <laughs> this is the best movie ever Everybody loves it. Whenever you bring up, like, do you want to watch Practical Magic? Everybody I know is like, oh, my God, yes. Mm -hmm. Except for Chelsea until right now. Who stayed quiet until, yeah. (laughs) Until right now. Weirdly mum. Right. (laughs) But there's a reason for that. I don't care if it's five movies in one. It is. It has ups. It has downs. It is scary. It is funny. It is. Uh such like a perfect time capsule for 1998 also like the wardrobe alone the dream house if i ever am incredibly rich you will know i won't say anything but you will know because i will build this house somewhere off a Send in me a the small schematics. island off the coast of new england like catch me doing that jumping off my roof with a bungee mm-hmm. jump, I will be attached to it because I cannot float. Unfortunately, I don't think I've never. Maybe tried. by then, yeah, not your yet. powers will be not strong yet. enough. I've never tried, so I could, but who knows? Who it's, it's very okay. possible. Yeah, let's so, maybe not try. This is a five out of five for me. <laughs> as long as you never try, then there's always the possibility that you could. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'll um, go next. Um. I thought that this was a very sweet movie. Like I said, I cried multiple times. Um, I love the sisters aspect of it. It was definitely more um, violent and sad than I was expecting. I thought it was a lot goofier. Um, So that was a surprise a little bit. But it is such a classic 90s Sandra Bullock rom-com for me that there's no way that I wouldn't love it. Like, 
you get so many different Sandra Bullocks also too. Like you get front bang Sandra Bullock. You get like curly hair Sandra Bullock. You get like cozy clothes in bed Sandra Bullock. You get like dressed to the nines Sandra Bullock. Like I just, I love her. That's my bitch. That will always be my bitch. Um, so for her alone, it would be like a five knives movie. Um, I think I, the, the love that I have for it will grow um and uh, any questions I have will be resolved so I'm not going to actually give it a full five knives at this time um I'm going to leave room for growth in the future but I'm going to give it like a 4.7 out of five. Hell yeah I'm going to give this one like a 4.85 I fucking love this movie so much like I was saying before this is like a fall hug but I would like to upgrade that it's like you're laying in bed and you're really comfy and fall is spooning you and holding you it's tight. Like it's like you're in you a like depression bed held. and fall comes in and strokes your nose. <laughs> and knocks your little <laughs> witch hat askew. <laughs> it's lived. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just, it's just the coziest movie ever even though like it's not happy all the time and there's you cry and whatever i i fucking love to cry i don't know if, uh, if any other bitches can Look. relate i i fucking love to cry and i didn't today weirdly but it's because i knew it was gonna happen and your um, sister which took your tears i know my sister which took all my tears and that's just what happens sometimes and it's fine <laughs> but i don't know i i had a really great time watching this again i'm really glad that we did it um i wish that i had watched it at night under a big blanket, drinking tea and smoking movie supplements. Um, that would have been perfect. But instead, I watched it at 3 p.m., the last possible time that I could have watched it before recording this podcast episode. So it was a little bit. It goes sometimes. Yeah. But it was uh, such a fucking joy. And it's just like two of the most beautiful women in the entire world wearing the cutest outfits that you've ever seen in your entire life and everyone's witches and everything's great. And Evan Rachel Wood, like one of my ultimate crushes is in it, even though she's a child, but it's just great to know that she has her presence. Yeah. Yeah. No, her energy bring there. Just the fact that she's in it makes me love her even more. Exactly. I'm like, this is great. Evan Rachel Wood's lore that she's in such an incredible movie at such a young age. Anyway. So, 4.85 4.85 for me. Um, but that's the end of Practical Magic. It's so sad. It's the end of Sydney Palooza. But as we said, it is a state of mind, babes. It's a state of mind. So you can re-enter that state of mind at any time. Um, but next week. So here's the thing. Yeah, okay, it's Halloween right now. So that means that tomorrow Halloween is over, which doesn't really make any sense to me. I feel like it's wrong and it shouldn't Halloween be. Halloween is also a state of mind. Especially agree, when I we're agree. spooky year round. We're spooky year round. I'm sorry, I'm not going to keep doing it forever. I'm not going to do it forever. Um, but I I did it just so Chelsea would make that face she's making, which is an <laughs> unhappy face. It's, it's a stink face. <laughs> it's a stink face. Uh, <laughs> Here's the thing. Monica's spooky is my Sigamontos. So no, uh, spooky is way cuter than Sigamontos. <laughs> Segment is not cute. Spooty, kind of cute, but it's the same. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Okay, what we won't let you leave Halloween behind because there are so many movies that we wanted to do this month, and we had to do something that wasn't scary for Fifth Tuesday, and so we're keeping the vibes going. We're keeping the haunts flying. We're doing something that's actually really fucking scary. Um, it's a movie that. Sydney introduced me to earlier this year and it rocked my fucking socks. It's a found <laughs> footage movie. You know, I let that shit. Um, it is Hell House LLC. <laughs> LLC. 2015. Uh, I just looked yeah, at the 2015. schedule. 2015. Okay, cool. You know what? Honestly, in the last couple of weeks, I've been watching some like 2010s horror movies and like they need a little bit more love. There was some cool shit going on. No one cared or I didn't care. So no one cared. If I didn't care, no one cared in my in my world, apparently. <laughs> um, but they don't get as much like. I don't see as many people being like, oh, my God, the 2010s were the best horror genre, like decade ever. There's some that's fucking gems the in there. Came out. Huh? I said that's the era of the roommate. It's true. And so I just. There's some good ones. There's some good ones. There's some good gems I've seen lately. So maybe some more of that. But anyway, um, watch this movie if you haven't seen it. It's a baller. It's going to be a fun time. 
Sid- Ch- Sydney is going to be fine. Chelsea's going to be scared. <laughs> I'm going to be scared again. <laughs> um, but okay, what was our poll question again? Just to remind the listeners, the spookies. Who was hotter, Michael or Gary? Oh, I mean, we already know. Um, uh, so. People have their different opinions. Captain Gregson from Elementary is a sexy guy in his own way. Yep. We didn't get. Let's put Jimmy no in the Michael. pool, maybe also just to expand our. <laughs> who options. was the sexy? Who was the sexiest male love interest in yeah. the movie? He was movie? sexy for a while, maybe, unless you thought he was cringe. Um, he was sexy for. And Monica. I liked him in Timeless. So. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's the poll question. So put. But on for your me, Stalker pack. Channing also maybe the sexiest of the film. So. Oh my god. She's just so everything to me. Her eyes. Oh, my God. She, and she, the way they styled her in this, she just looks so incredible. And Very inspired. Very obsessed with Rizzo. Yes. Um. Okay. Well, it's time once again for me to say, give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Um, it's Halloween. Say happy Halloween. Say this is your Olympics. As Chelsea said, congratulations. You got a gold medal. Here's five stars. Yay! That was perfect. There you go. Write that down exactly word for word. You're done. Um, also we'll accept five stars on Spotify as well. So thank you so much. Um, and why not follow us on social media? We're at spooky underscore Tuesday on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, letterboxed. I think that's it. And then Tumblr and Facebook, we're at Spooky Tuesday Pod. And we're also on YouTube. And you should follow us on YouTube because maybe I'm going to start editing these into real videos where you could watch us, but maybe not. I haven't decided yet. We'll find Who out. Knows? You'll find it's out. A, you won't know I mean unless mystery. you subscribe. <laughs> unless you subscribe, you won't know. So don't be an idiot. Do it. Come on. Um. And anyway, thank you for listening. See you next Tuesday. Bass bookies. I have newt and toe of frog. Will of bat, tongue of dog. Adder's fork and blind worms stink. Barbados lime is just the thing. Fregger's salt like a sailor's stubble. Flip the switch and let the cauldron bubble. <laughs> How can <laughs> <video>? <laughs> Spooky Tuesday was created by Monica Height, Sydney Thompson, and Chelsea Duff, and edited by Sydney Thompson. Our gorgeously spooky tunes are all thanks to Tamara Simons, who you can follow on Instagram at Captain Tamara, and our podcast art is by Mary Murphy, who you can find on Instagram at the underscore moon underscore omg.